Oh, oh neat. neat. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think that I think old Chatham has a copy, don't you, Jerry? Absolutely. Yes, a couple of them. <laughs> He's Good. hiding it from me. Clearly, I need that. I forgot about <laughs> it. It'll be on your desk on Monday morning. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, does anybody else have any other questions or, or thoughts? I, I do, actually. Um, Brother Arnold, you said that you were going to sell some of the um, fleeces for hand spinners. Yay. Are you selling those online? Um, I don't know. I was, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't thought that far ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, well, because I, I would be interested in buying one. So, I, and I could probably even hook you up with some more hand spinners because that's the thing I do. So, okay. All right. Um, well, get a hold of us. I, we don't share before April. Okay. And I'll make sure you get April. thankful. Thankful has the best one. She's amazing. Oh, really? Yeah, nice. I think I think it's probably six or seven inches. Staple is six or seven inches long already. Excellent. Wow. Nice. Wow. Is that there must be a point at which they really need to be sheared, or if they're not sheared, does the does it, their growth slow, so it's okay? No, you got to okay. shear them. You got to shear them. Yeah, because the way we bred them, I mean, it used to be the when the the breed was the breed. Uh, they would be able to put them on bushes and rocks and all of that stuff and more or less pull it off because it wasn't very long. But as we, for the last thousand, two thousand years or so, cultivated the sheep, we wanted richer and richer staple and thicker and thicker wool. Uh, remember there was that story out of Australia of that Coriadale that escaped and he was like three or right, four right. years running yeah. around. And that was horrible. <laughs> he couldn't see. Hey, right. Yeah, he was blinded by the wool. Shetland sheep will still shed naturally. You have I to get to just the right place or the new, the rise of the new fleece comes up behind the old fleece. But that's, mm. they're a primitive and unimproved breed. Mm. They're devious too. Yeah. <laughs> a little, little wild. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, they're the worst of my whole flock. They're so adorable. I can't get mad at them, but Michael's mad at them all the time because they always find a way to escape. Um, is there a particular breed of dog that makes good watchdogs? Oh, that's a good question. We had we experimented with one, a Maremma, which mm -hmm. was the Italian version of a Great Pyrenees. Mm -hmm. But the sheep hated him, and he hated the sheep. I didn't really get along. Uh, that was a bad experiment. I have a friend who has maremmas with sheep, and um, I think that the, the sheep in that particular dog are very happy, but I remember being told it was not a dog that my children could walk up to when they were little. Boy, that's as true as true can be. Uh, so Habakkuk was our dog's name, and we had signs on the fence that said, stay away from the dog, don't touch the dog, stay away from the fence and all of that because he was 132 pounds. And when he stood up, he was like six feet tall. And he, oh, he was adorable. And he had these eyes. And so he called, you know, people would see him and think, oh, it can't be him. And they start to go over and he'd wait and then he would erupt at them. <laughs> and Sister Frances was madly in love with this dog. And so every day when she took her afternoon stroll around the village, she would make him a sandwich. She cut the crusts off no less, made him into little tea sandwiches. <laughs> and then she would hand feed him like six or eight pieces, even, made him even more spoiled than he already was. <laughs> Brother Arnold, you, it's interesting, you do continue to name all of your sheep, right? Of course. Of course. I know each one of them. Mm -hmm. So well, let's see, so who do we have? Let's see, well, the last ones born that are still being, uh, Bottle fed are Allie and Sarah. Those are for Jesse's girls because they were here during all of lambing and showed a lot of interest. But the funny thing is they could care less about those lambs. They only want to be with Ted. So um, and that didn't exactly work the way I thought it was going to. Any bond. But we have Hope. The first one born was Hope. And she was named, her mom was a Shetland. And she shouldn't have been preg impregnated by a, a ram that's four or five times larger than her. And um, there was, it was a really bad birth and her brother who was bigger had gotten stuck 
and his neck was down and it was just a mess. He didn't live more than about three minutes and she was small, way too small. And we, it, it was March and it was so bitterly, bitterly cold. And so I, I had this thing about the power of the name and I really think that, I, so I said, I named her Hope because I had the biggest hope that she was gonna live. And now of course she's decided she's gonna run the flock. <laughs> so it worked. The second one born was thankful. And that happened a few days later and we came down to the barn and here was this lamb. She was up, she was clean, she was dry and she was suckling on her own. And I just said, I am so thankful to God for this. And Michael said, that's her name, thankful. So we have thankful. We have two spot because he had two spots when he was born. He's a little touched. Glutton because he was twice the size of everybody and he has always been a glutton. He's like a frat boy. <laughs> but he's got a good personality. And a uh, little girl who's his sister because this poor thing is surrounded by um, three, five brothers. She's the only girl. So she's a little girl. Although her proper name is Lynn. There's Joseph because he was just Joe. He's just like a Joe. That's all. And his brother is Sebastian. Uh, he was, he, they were triplets. And the first one died. He was born backwards and he had never really lived. He had fluid in the lungs and he suffocated before he got out of the womb. And the second one was Sebastian, who I named Samson initially uh, because I needed him to have some strength. And when he got strength, I said, I really don't like that name. That's not who he is. So he's Seth for Sebastian. And then Joe, who came out perfect and normal and just, you know, the way he's supposed to. So he's, that's Joe. Uh, who else do we have? Oh, we have Skunk because when he was born, he looked just like a skunk. He's getting a little less skunky, more black and less white, but he's still kind of characteristically that way. And we have, oh, and his brother Osiris, because he looks Egyptian, he has these black um, circles right around his eyes like the Egyptians did in their, their painting. So that's how he got his name. And oh, I don't know, there's plenty more. I won't bore you with all their names, but we still name them all. Well, and I will jump in and say that I happen to know on the Sabbath Day Lake website, you can sponsor one of these cool lambs. Mm. Um, so you can, you can see pictures of them and, and choose to sponsor one. That's right. And, that's not, and the reason we did that was because this has been a very expensive haul. Um, so anyways, we, we paid $9,000 in vet bills alone just having to use the technology to have things move. And then for instance, June was too small to have a lamb and it was ready. So we, she had to have a C-section to save her. And um, the lamb didn't live, but she has, thank God. And anyways, we just went on and on and on. Then we found out, of course, we're not lamb proof anymore. We had to buy thousands of dollars of fencing to keep them in. And we had to buy hay because we have a drought and we don't have enough with the increase of 20 something new lambs. So it just, it's kind of snowballed in a bad way, but people's sponsorships have been way higher than we thought. We're very thankful. They, they, it's great. And it's helped them out a lot too. So we're thankful, thankful, thankful. Well, that is our That was good news. When, um, when they process the wool, do they process, they mix all the different breeds together? Well, not really. The, well, the, anything that is white, yay, but the colored stuff is not. The colored stuff is kept for natural, and that will be either white sheep gray, medium sheep gray, or dark sheep gray that'll go into that, or it'll go into a dark heather, something like that that they make. Cool. Who determines that? Is that determined by the spinnery? It is. Yeah. They make you separate it and they look at it to make sure that you have done, done it right. Mm -hmm. Nice. How long does it go away for? If you, said, if you shear in April, uh, well, when will your yarn come back? Like in the fall? Hopefully. <laughs> uh, yeah. They have to do it by a lot. They have to have enough so that they can do the dyeing and everything else. So it can sometimes take a year or a year and a half before they have enough to be able to say, if we choose an obscure color before they have enough that they can use the dye because they won't do it for a small lot. So it has, to, I can't remember what the minimum is for them to do a dye, but so it can take, it can certainly take a while. 
Quite, well, it's quite an undertaking. And it sounds like you'll have lots of inventory over the next few years. Uh, agreed. <laughs> Well, it's good news because it's lovely stuff. Okay. Well, and when COVID finally is over, or at least at bay, and people can come up, I think you'll find most of our flock is very friendly. And uh, they, it would be nice for you to be able to see them. Mm. It's too bad you can't see the limb. I would love to have been down at the barn at this time, but we have no Wi-Fi that stretches that far. Uh, or I would have been down there and you could actually have seen them because they would pig pile. Oh, fun. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Are the lambs with the general population or they are, are they separate? Yeah, they're not separate. They're with everybody. Okay. Brother Arnold, I have to ask, uh, what, what happened to Will? And uh, has, has he been fixed so that you won't have this problem again next year? Or what, what has happened to him? Well, guess, Paul, what do you think happened? The very, day we, found out, he, yeah, the very day we found out, he was he went off. And he, <laughs> that, he was that, properly doctored this time. That That's what I was assuming, but I had not heard that on, in any way, shape, or form mm -hmm. from, uh, from uh, the Sabbath Day Lake. But I was sort of assuming that very quickly he got taken care of. Yeah, he certainly did. Well, he was, he was put in a separate pen in another barn to begin with. And then they, I think they couldn't do him for two days. So he mm -hmm. was out there and then he came back. A, a very, very different ram. He's very mellow now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> out, of the, out of your lambs, how many rams could you have? He threw to a lot of rams, which means the moms were in good shape. I think uh, 11 of them are males. Yeah. Do they produce yarn? Do they produce wool that makes yarn the same regardless of gender? Mm hmm yeah. They do. Yeah, actually, for us, um, our, our weathers, which are neutered rams, generally speaking, produce more wool than the ewes. Interesting. Uh, no, I've, well, I've, see, a lot of them, well, they're bigger. So there's more of them. So therefore, they, they produce a greater mass of wool. Pretty logical. Pretty logical. Are there any other farmers above us? Does anybody here, has anybody here kept sheep? I used to have sheep, but then we moved back to town, so I can't have them here. I have like a, not even an eighth of an acre. It's <laughs> bad. And rabbits, smell to do rabbits again. <laughs> so at the, at the sh sheep herding place, didn't they use donkeys for guarding the sheep? They did. Mm -hmm. I think they had one mm -hmm. or two. Yeah. When they had a larger flock, they had two. Um, but when it got smaller, it was just one. Is, is that a pretty effective guarding situation? Uh, my experience is I took a dog over there one day who ran up to see the sheep and um, was Sorely threatened by the donkey, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> through the electric fence. So, seemed to respond well to a very friendly dog. <laughs> and some people keep llamas for that purpose too. Well, they did llamas for. Mm, I had a goose. I had a goose, and the thing about a goose is that if uh, anything gets near the goose, the goose is going to scream, and so then the sheep run into the barn. Problem solved. Wow, oh, that's interesting. Mm. I hadn't heard the goose, but I've been chased by a goose, so I believe it. Yeah, yeah. They also eat all the par parasites that come out of the back end of the sheep so that the sheep don't ingest them into the front end again, which is nice. Mm. Interesting. Are there, do you have other um, livestock on the farm at Sabbath Day Lake? We do. We have Scottish Highland cattle. Cool. <laughs> no chickens, no eggs? Oh, no. No? <laughs> that was a sister's job. <laughs> and uh, they got rid of that in 1959. They decided to go out of the business, and the chickens were hardly gone when they tore down the hen house to make sure that it was never going to happen again. 